with an accountability partner or with those people in your life with whom you've shared ups and downs, they're there for you whether or not you're in a low spot or a high spot. You can come into conversations with curiosity and no judgment. It just, it makes the conversation easier and it helps people feel seen and valued and heard and respected and safe. We're picking up here right where we left off in the last episode. Especially when we've got the community that we're building around accountability. I think that that notion about, well, maybe my loss isn't as big a loss as your loss, so it's not one that I'm going to bring up. If you hurt, you hurt. And if your hurt is really big because, say, it was a major surgery and mine is because... I stubbed my toe, whatever it is. It still hurts. Right. And I'm just thinking about how we judge ourselves. We we well, judge like... our level of lowness. <laughs> There's probably a more adult word about it. But the fact that if we're feeling low or we're just feeling like things have just gotten bigger than we're able to handle right now, we, we're going to discount and dismiss that fact where with an accountability partner or with those people in your life with whom you've shared ups and downs, they're there for you whether or not you're in a low spot or a high spot. Right. You've developed that. Yeah. Yeah. I remember years ago, a friend of mine was going through a pretty horrible divorce. So I was checking on her regularly and every conversation she would at some point say, but how are you? I want to hear about your life where other people will just take, 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 and they will spend all their time in their own stuff and mm -hmm. never check back. Mm -hmm. She always, no matter how ugly the divorce was getting, she always, I want to know what's going on in your world. I want to know what's going, what's right, what's wrong. Always wanted to have that conversation. And I just so respected that because it was, we're friends and it was a, it's a two way friendship. And even though she could have just sat there in her moment of need, um, there was that level of kind of accountability in our friendship, and she always honored it. There are some who might use that or interpret that as, oh, I guess she does not want to talk about this anymore, so she's changing the subject. But I bring that up because if somebody does that, if somebody does change the subject, as a open, wide open door communicator person who cares and respects and listens and leans in and does lots of the stuff we've already <laughs> talked about, it's worthy. If you don't really know that it's something that she is genuinely interested in, and it may be a tactic that she wants to not talk about this anymore, you got to respect it either way. And if You'd know if she was asking just to get off. Oh, she wasn't. No, she, no. It, it wasn't like that at all with her. But yeah. for us, how often do you use that tactic that said, you know what? Hey, let me turn it back on you because I'm tired of it being turned on me. Back to isolation, what we talked about in one of the last episodes. Yeah. Okay. So what we are talking about, however, I want to go back to that mastermind group where the, celebrating the wins together, celebrating what has been won. Mm -hmm. When you're feeling low, it's hard to think about all of the things that have gone well. So having a group like that, the kind that will sing your song for you mm -hmm. until you remember the words and can start singing it again yourself. Yeah. One of the things that we used to do in this mastermind group, we've gotten away from it, but you know how a lot of people keep a gratitude journal. Mm -hmm. We kept success journals. And you would write down the smallest of wins to the greatest of wins. And we did that for an entire year. And we each person did it individually. But it was really fun at the end of the year to go back and look at the previous year to think, wow, 12 months ago, this was a huge win. And I totally forgot about it. And just look back and see the year of growth and reflection and wins and celebrations that everyone had. It was really powerful. Think about that. In terms of self-reflection, yeah. being able to celebrate yourself. Mm -hmm. So while we're doing that, while we're doing that celebration, there's also the notion of encouraging people to step out 
It's granting permission from the beginning. Nobody has to wait for permission to be granted for you to be creative or to take a lead or to go do something that it feels like you should have to ask for permission, but you right. don't. Right. I used to work for someone who appreciated my creative prowess <laughs> <laughs> around PowerPoint presentations <laughs> and handed me a presentation that he was about to go present to some sen very senior level executives. I was horrified at the thought of him presenting this. Fantastic speaker, horrible at creating PowerPoint slides. I did not ask permission. I just went and I changed the entire thing. I made better graphics. I sh shrunk the words on the screen. I, I made a couple graphics stand out a little bit more. And a lot of it was arts and charts and finance things that you didn't need the whole thing. And I sent it back to him and I said, hey, I don't know if you want to use this or not, but I, I took the liberty of adjusting your PowerPoint slide just a little bit. I didn't spend much time on it, so don't freak out. <laughs> and he called me. <laughs> Oh my God, thank you so much. This looks a thousand times better. But why did you spend so much time on it? Literally took me 15 minutes. It's fine. <laughs> but he was so appreciative of it. But had I asked him for permission, by the time he would have got back to me, the presentation probably would have been over. Yes. So I just thought, and I did it with no expectation. I did it simply because I he's got a great brand. And I didn't want that PowerPoint presentation to ruin his brand. And so I did it and thought, you can use it or not. I, I have zero expectations that you're going to use it. I was glad that he did. <laughs> I was hoping that he would. But feelings are not going to be hurt if you say, I don't like this. I'm going to do it my way. Okay, cool. It could have easily have been, oh, my gosh, it is great. But I am not comfortable with it because it's not. it wasn't something that I pulled together. But the notion of stepping out, you stepped out. Yeah. And you did so from a place of respect and consideration and being a part of that team. And I knew that he wouldn't be upset by it. He wouldn't think that I was trying to one up him, that I thought I was better than him, that I was doing it for any other reason than I want to help. He knew my motivation. Yes. And that made it safe for me to just do it without asking permission. Other leaders, I would have never done that for. <laughs> Because they would have, they, uh, with that would have come all sorts of, you're just doing this because, and they would have all these not great motives. <laughs> that takes us right into the notion of that growing together, reflecting through these experiences, reflecting and being able to grow together, learn from each other. We're just understanding how we get better Yeah. by spending that time. And being able to reflect not just on what you did or what happened, just even the being together in the experience. Yeah. I think back to some of the teams I led, taking it kind of the professional path, and how some teams we would have team meetings and it would literally just be a review of the work that we've done or the work we have coming up. And... I know that time is important and all of that. And so it was fine. It was functional. We did what we needed to do. Most of the time, what anyone else on the team was working on didn't impact me in any way. And same for the rest of the people. And then I worked on a team that went so far over the other side of that spectrum that it was all, how was your weekend? What did you do? What do you have coming up this week? And it was just all non-business all personal and it was like can we find a balance of that <laughs> and so I got this tip from somebody and she said in her team meetings this fairly small team she liked to ask and you could pick one my team was so small that we did all three but it really connected us and it was what is a pow a chow and oh my gosh I forget what the third one was a wow a wow, a pow, and a chow. It was a wow, like an awesome thing that happened to you in the past week. A pow was something that kind of gut punched you, but then you learned your lesson or you still needed help with it. And then a chow was something good that you ate that week. <laughs> so, so we learned that we had a couple really great chefs on the team. <laughs> but it was a fun way to connect and it was quick. It was easy. And when the person needed help 
on something, we often spent time digging in there or we would schedule a meeting for later to say, okay, you said you needed help with this. We're going to rally and get you the help you need. But it was easy and it was building connection and it was just building some accountability in that team and how we were going to operate. The notion of checking in, being yeah. able to just do a quick 30 second check in, being able to say, I, I love the, the recipe. Yeah. For, that's really fun. Yeah. Okay. So we talk about reflecting. We talk about growing together and it, it just, it happens so long as we care to let it happen. Yeah, and I think an important part of growing together is about how we celebrate, how we handle the challenges. What do we say? What do we do? How do we stick together when we have those challenging times is really important. Mm -hmm. Especially, again, when we're thinking about creating that culture of accountability. Yeah. And I remember working with an executive team. I was doing some coaching, and there was a lot of finger pointing. It was never my fault. It was always someone else's fault. And so we did some activities around how we could better hold each other accountable. And one of the activities I did was I gave them a three by five card and I had them write down their names, their titles, their credentials, all their stuff that made them who they were. And then I had them flip it over and I said, on this side, draw the size, a circle the size of your ego. And some of them laughed and said, this building isn't big enough for my ego. <laughs> so I had them do all of that. And then I collected it in the waste bin and I threw it out into the hallway and said, you can pick them up on your way out. We would have the best conversations when people weren't thinking about titles, credentials. It was really cool. And some of them carried that forward into their teams and really noticed what a difference it made in the dynamics, particularly around holding each other accountable, because they were always looking to the most senior person in the room to hold people accountable. And it was like, I don't care who you are or what your title is. You have the right to hold others accountable. And just that shift made a big difference. I did a similar exercise and just took all of the credentials and said, okay, these are good. And they put them out outside that meeting room. I said, you can pick them up when you leave because all that matters right now in this room is that we focus on this topic and we give it the best we got, regardless of mm. how long you've been here, what title you have. We need the best of what you've got. There are no senior and lower junior type right. people. And that was certainly with the understanding from the leader of that group who requested mm -hmm. that I help facilitate that. And it, as you said, the exchange was rich. Mm -hmm. It was, I'm <laughs> I'd been in meetings with this group before and then being able to see this happen, wow. Yeah. Wow to check your ego, to check your title at the door. Yeah. So you think about families, communities, your friendship groups. There's probably one person that does a lot of the accountability, mm -hmm. but it doesn't need to be that way. We can have a conversation and shift that. Yes. And grant permission to everyone to have those kinds of accountability conversations. Yes. And when we get there, one of the very powerful things is to learn from every every bump that we have to navigate, every stumble mm -hmm. that might be made by me as an individual, by us as a group with the, the goal of achieving whatever it is. We need to learn, if we don't learn from it, well, first off, we're <laughs> certain to repeat it, but there's more to that. It's about learning and respecting learning and respecting others' voices in trying to come up with what could we have done differently? What can we take from this forward so that plans we make in the future are going to benefit from the stumble we just took? Mm -hmm. That takes a lot of safety and respect and listening and, and communication. Yes, yes, communication. <laughs> Yes, so we talk about it from accountability. We had it from the inside. Now we've discussed it as it starts to emerge out. And there's more to be said about accountability, but when it gets down to it, you really are trying to create a culture 
that, that you help to make safe and respectful and engaging. You can't, how can you be more beautifully accountable than owning your responsibility for helping that to come to pass? And there you have it. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to Unapologetic Rebel Rousers. I'm Doc Shelley. And I'm Carla. We'll see you next time. Can you be more beautifully accountable than owning your responsibility for helping that to come to pass? Thank you.